My name is uh, Lori Apollado. I'm from California, United States of America, and um, I'm 41. So I received a phone call from my husband, Hamid Farhan, on December 21st. Um, he went to go meet an uncle that was from Italy, and he got into a disagreement, and he called me at uh, 4.30 a.m. Moroccan time. Um, I was waiting for his phone call for quite a few hours. And um, he mentioned to me that he got into a fight with his uncle. Um, I was worried, I was upset, because I didn't hear from him for a long time. Uh, we have a long distance relationship call, so everything's based on the phone. Um, so I was waiting him for a long time and I was worried. And finally he called me and he was, you know, upset. He was stressed and he mentioned that he got into a fight with his uncle, so I was very, very uh, worried about him. Uh, so I met him about two, two years ago. Uh, I was on a vacation with some friends in Morocco and we met in Chef Shawin at, at his work and we instantly connected when we met. I felt like I knew him like 20 years ago and um, from there we, we had a long distance relationship and then a couple months later he asked me to get married. So last year, February 20, sorry, February 10th, we, we got married and during the COVID and pandemic, our relationship and marriage just grew. Um, we fell in love with each other even more and more. He had like the sweetest heart. Um, we had plans for the future and we're planning to build our life in America together. Um, it's just a matter of time for him to come to America. And he was an amazing, amazing man. <laughs> Um, so I received the phone call. He got beat by his uncle. Um, he mentioned he wanted to call me later to let me know that he got home. So he got home a couple hours later. He was in severe pain. Um, he didn't want to tell me all the details of what happened with this uncle of his from Italy. Um, all I knew is that he was with the mafia. Um, he got into a fight. He was in severe pain, aching from his, his upper body. He could barely walk. Um, he had a hard time talking and breathing a little bit. Um, and then three days later, he died on December 25th on my Christmas day. <sighs> so I was very distraught. I was lost. I was confused of what happened. Um, I knew that he got into a fight. Um, and I was angry and furious of what happened. Uh, he wasn't able to give me any details. Um, he wanted to wait till he got better to let me know what happened. Um, but he didn't make it, unfortunately, and he died. So, my, me and my sister-in-law, Naima, we came out here right away, as soon as we could. Um, to start the investigation, we went to the police station, started talking to um, the chief of police. Uh, they started their investigation with the witnesses, they took statements from me, um, and some other witnesses as well, to give my declaration of what happened because Hamid told me that he got into a fight with this uncle from from Italy. Um, we waited for about a couple of weeks for the autopsy which took a while to get. The autopsies stated that he was beaten to death which was the cause of his death. Um, so we went to the police station, I went to the ambassador David Fisher, the general counsel, to let them know and address like there's a situation here that I need help with because I'm not familiar with the Moroccan law and government so I was asking for help. Um, we went to the courthouse. We did everything that we could just to uh, find justice for Hubbard. Uh We had a lot of evidence from the autopsy, the, my declarations, the witnesses, um, which I thought would be enough to go ahead and get justice f and get this person in jail, whoever did this to my husband. I'm leaving this Friday. It's been almost two months and um, there's nothing that has happened. They just said it's still, the file is still in the courthouse. Uh, there's not enough evidence that, you know, that this person was killed by, by this uncle. And I'm upset and furious because he, he was a human being. He was a, was a soul. It, he got beaten and someone did this to him and he's still here in Morocco. And the government is, n is not, uh, cooperating or willing to help to find justice. I understand that, I mean, that makes sense as well. Um, but I just feel that with the facts given, I just feel that it should be done a little bit sooner, if anything. 
um, just based on my statement and the witnesses and the autopsies, I, I just feel that in the United States it would be a little bit faster. But here, it's, it's I'm just not getting anything. <laughs> of course, I'll, I'll, I'll always return back. I have a Moroccan family here now, so <laughs> I will return but uh, to visit my husband and everybody. Um, but no, I, I'm sad. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I should probably say three because America, Philippines, and nice. Morocco. <laughs> okay. uh, just to, you know, please, as, as we go home, I'm going home on Friday back to the States, just to not uh, forget this this case. And, you know, I'm pleading for justice for my husband, um, for peace for him and our family. Mm. And I just hope that, you know, once we go back, that this case does not fall. I just want to take one last moment before I leave to thank everybody here for all the efforts um, of the family, the police station, the Moroccan government, the king, <laughs> everybody in Morocco um, who has been here to help us try to find justice for my husband and get, get this process going. Um, I'm here to and I'm willing to cooperate and, and help as well. Um, if there's any questions um, to solve this this situation here and um, hopefully this will not be forgotten <laughs> once I leave and I hope that um, that we can get this resolved as soon as possible for peace and justice for my husband okay thank I you get so forgetting. Much.